Welcome to the Board Game Informant. I'm Eric, and I'm going to teach you 18 Scan. I'm going to teach this game, assuming you know the, the rules to 1830. Uh, if you don't know the rules to 1830, I'd suggest you go and learn that game first, maybe even play it a few times, and then come back and learn 18 Scan with me, and I'll just go over the differences between that game and this game. 18 Scan is a short 18xx game that was maybe intended to be uh, a learning 18xx game although i don't think it maybe really is a great one to learn the genre with it's designed by david hecht and i'm just going to hang out on the map here for a little while while we go over some rules differences also just as a side note i'm recording this all in one take so i might make some mistakes i'll try and correct them as i go um the bank size in this game is 6,000 crooner uh, K that like you can see in these mountains here, there's K60, uh, that's 60 crooner. So all of the de denominations for money is crooner in this game. Um, as usual, there is a 60% limit to ownership of stock in this game for each company. In a two player game, it's a 70% ownership limit. It's an incremental cap game um, and the companies float when a number of shares have been bought that equal the current phase. So, for example, the three phase, when the first three train is bought, uh, you can't float a company until you have bought three shares or three shares of a company have been bought, um, at, at which point the company gets to operate. Uh, when a, the four trains are out, then... Similarly, there has to be four shares sold um, in order for the company to float. And in the phase five and onward, the companies are fully capitalized. Um, when a company is floated, you place the home token on the board and then it'll operate in the next round. Um, privates and miners in this game, which are here, privates and miners, do count toward the cert limit um, in some games. Maybe they don't, so that's something to know. But the face value of the private companies here don't count towards the end game worth. The private companies here, let's talk about these. They are never sold to a company, and they're player owned until they're closed, which is either by the use of their power or phase five. Um, if tokens aren't bought when they close, so for example, this company has two tokens to put down on two different companies, and this company has one token. Um, if they're not bought when they close, then the tokens will go into the bank pool, and anyone can buy them from the bank. Um, the tokens that get placed on the board are permanent, and all privates, one, two, and three, come with share uh, shares for major companies. So that when you buy one of these privates, you actually get a share in another company. So something that's pretty unique about this game is that the initial stock round is not a zipper unwinding style, 1830 style initial stock round. So what you do in the initial stock round is you, you actually bid for the right to purchase an item at face value. So if we have a three player game, the first player would sit down and they would look between these private companies and these minor companies, which we can go over in a little bit. And you basically say, well, I want to buy one of these things. So I'll make a bid of maybe 15 K. And what you're bidding for is the right to purchase any one of these things at face value. So if you win the bid, if you know your two opponents then pass, then you pay 15 kroner to the bank, and then you pick any one of these things and just buy it. So, for example, you could buy uh, the Southern Main Line, the number one private or minor company, excuse me, here for 260k kroner, not thousand. Um, so, initial stock run. Uh, we bid for the right to purchase an item at face value in five kroner increments. Um, zero is the minimum bid and you can, you can pass on initiating. 
Uh, you continue until all items are purchased or all players decline to initiate an auction for, the, for an item. If all players decline to initiate an auction, the initial stock run ends. And then you immediately perform two ORRs, two ORs, operating ranks. And um, you place all unsold items into the bank pool, which can then be bought at face value during subsequent stock rounds. Um, priority passes to the left of the last player to initiate an auction for each step through the initial stock round. And it's important to note that no matter how the ISR ends, the players will conduct a pair of ORs. So when you're having the initial stock round, if you you and your uh, opponents buy all six of these, then you immediately advance the game into, or you continue the, the initial stock round into buying the these, the major companies. You can buy shares of these major companies. Um, something that is noteworthy is that the private companies that come with a share, um, in the case of these two companies, they come with a single share. This company comes with the presidency of the DSB. These two companies don't. So when you get the Stockholm Abo Ferry, you get a share of the VR, but you don't get the presidency and you don't get one half of the presidency. So if you get this company and then you wanted to go float the VR, if you continue the stock round, you still have to buy the presidency. You just have a third share. Um, also worth note is that if you pass in the auction for the right to bid something in the private, um, in the initial stock round, there's no re-entry into that. You can't pass and then hop back in if people pass back to you. So that's the initial stock round. Um, let's go over the minor companies here. The, who? Oh, okay. Um, so the, the three minor companies here at some point in the game, actually at a very specific point in the game at uh, phase five will form this bad boy, the, the SJ, the SJ is the national railway railway in this game. Um, and three of its shares, three of its tokens and three of its shares will be from these three minor companies. Um, they operate just like a major company with a few differences. You can actually see on, on these charters of the companies, there's a, there's a summary of the different, you know, train limits that they can have in the, each phase. So these minor companies have a train limit of two, um, in the phase two, whereas these have a trim limit of four in phase two. Um, so there are some differences as far as what they're allowed to have in them. So that's worth noting. They also each have a starting location and a destination location. So these minor companies are trying to get to a spot. So number one here is trying to get to E6. So if we go back to the map, we see that number one is here and it's trying to get to E6 here. And that's denoted by this square one value. Two is trying to get up here and three is trying to get to Oslo. Um, so when these companies operate, they split their revenues. They pay half of their revenue into their comp into their charter and half to their owner. Um, if they make no money, then they pay, you get the government gives them like a 10 K 10 kroner subsidy, um, that gets paid to the owner. Basically, if they're not making any money for you, then they, they generate 10 bucks. Um, they each have a destination. Like I said, a legal, a legal, that's, a, that's new, a legal route to the destination temporarily interrupts the owning, uh, the operating company's turn. So if you get the first private here, to connect as soon as it connects to its destination location, the turn is interrupted before it can run its train or anything, right? So this is the first step in the game where you're just laying track. 
Um, and it gets to do something called a bonus run. And during a bonus run, minor companies get to place an extra token for free, either now or never. So they have a, a token that sits here up on their number and it will get to be placed on the tile uh, that it connected to. It doesn't need to have a place to put it at its destination. There are special rules for that. So if, for example, there was a city at that location and it was all tokened out, but it was a yellow or a green city, and when it were to be upgraded, there'd be a new open spot, you just assume that that token will be able to like fill that spot later. So you'd put it on sort of off to the side on that tile. So you get to have a token. You get then get to run trains that the company has and add 80 K to the total 80 kroner, 80 bucks. Um, just so uh, if you, um, if you don't have any trains, you, you get to earn 80 kroner by default. Um, and then you pay the split dividend. Um, all bonus runs happens happen. If a miner had a legal, legal route at the time of connection, other miners can't token them out, for example. So there are situations where multiple miners can be connected to the destination with a single tile upgrade. And in that case, um, you do get to resolve all the bonus runs, even if like, I don't know, three went through here, if it went through the one destination and then got tokened out in the middle of it or something, you'd still get to run them all. Um, the extra token can only be placed, <laughs> which I wrote, I, okay, wrote this note down incorrectly. Um, it can only be placed during the bonus run, the extra token on the on a minor company. You can't, there's no other way to get this onto the board. Um, they're never required to own a train. And uh, it's like I mentioned before, it's no th wor no worth noting the reduced train limit. So that's kind of the deal with the minor companies. Um, let's talk about the SJ. So here are the shares of regular companies, the four normal companies, the SNJ, the VR, the DSB, and the NSB. And in these companies, you'll note kind of like in other games, there are differing numbers of tokens that they can place. Um, but outside of that, they're all the same. If we go back and look at the map, the DSB starts here, the VR starts down here, the NSB starts in Oslo, the SNJ starts way up here in the corner next to the Karuna Mines. This is an important location, even though it doesn't look like it. Anyway, um, you'll notice that the SJ isn't anywhere on the map here, and that's because when the first five train is bought, um, the SJ is formed, and it's formed from the three minor companies. All of the three minor companies' assets go to the SJ charter. The SJ always starts at 100 kroner on the stock market here. These are the par values, by the way, 70, 75, 82, 90, and 100. Um, so all the assets go in from the miners. It starts at 100K and it gets seven shares worth of capitalization when it forms. Seven shares uh, because, oh right, seven shares because three of the shares are sort of pseudo represented represented by the three miners. So they're contributing money. So you don't get shares worth that, you know, 100, 100 per value with them. Um, the seven shares, sorry, seven shares can be bought prior to the phase five for 100 K each, 100 kroner, because, uh, including the presidency, because that's the price that's going to be set. Um, you can buy the presidency, but it can't float until phase five. And then three of the shares are reserved for the owners of the minor companies. And that's because three of the shares have this exchange share on here. There, are, There's the presidency, there's one, two, three, four, five regular shares, 
and then there's three shares that are called exchange shares. Um, and when it's formed, the three minor companies in exchange for the minor companies, the owners of those minor companies receive the exchange share of the company. So if you aren't going to become the president of the SJ in compensation for that company stealing all of your miners' assets, you get a share in it. This is similar to 1856 and a number of other games that have a, a national railway. Um, when it's formed, if five shares are in play, uh, the presidency and the three reserved shares, it'll operate in the next OR. Um, otherwise, it won't. When it's formed, if two SJ tokens are on the same... So, sorry, the I didn't mention the minor company tokens that got placed during bonus runs. They will become... SJ tokens. They'll, they'll flip over and on the back side there'll be an SJ symbol just like this. Um, if there are two tokens on the same city when it gets formed, one will go back onto this charter. Um, note that the train limits for the SJ are one higher than any other company. So it gets formed in the five phase and then there's three, there's three different kinds of trains that can be bought during its operation and its train limit is always three. And if we look at a regular company during five, five E and four D the train limit is two. So that's important to note. Um, something I didn't mention earlier is that the shares in the treasury of a company, just like other partial cap games for a normal company, they pay their dividends into the corporation. So similar to 1846, for example, when you pay shares, when you pay dividends, you want to have as many shares in this company as possible initially to fund train purchases, excuse me, future train purchases, purchases. Um, so that's about it for the SJ. Um, let's look at the trains. The trains are dual, double sided. So this is this is a picture of the one, two, three, four, five, six, two trains in the game. And on the back of each of them, for a 20K discount, there is a different type of train. So this is fairly common in 18XX games. There's a two train, which is just this, this train can visit two locations. And then there's a one plus one train. And what that means is that it can visit one large city and one small city. It can... Um, mm -hmm. right not more than one can be a large city you could visit two small cities or, or towns or joints or whistle stops uh, with this one plus one but you couldn't visit two large cities with it um, similarly there's one two three four three trains with the two plus two in the back and you can kind of see that like with the two train there's the same number of locations here but this is very cheap, and in the beginning of the game, you might only be able to visit ones and one plus ones. I'm sorry, uh, one city and one small location, small town, because there are lots of small towns throughout the board, and all these companies start with like close to one of them. So you might be visiting those locations two, three, fours. So, sorry, I was pointing out that two and one and one is the same number, right? But then three, as soon as you start to get into the three trains, you actually get to visit more total locations with the two plus two than with the three. And similarly, four is four locations versus six with the three plus three. And then the first permanent train is a five train. And four plus four, obviously, eight locations is three more. So, you know, something to consider. Then we have these five E trains, which are express trains, and they can visit as many cities as possible, and they can ignore, sorry, five, up to five cities, and they can ignore small, small cities when they run. Something to note also is that when you're buying the trains in this game, hmm, I believe... 
that when you buy the first, there we go. Um, the five E trains become available once the first five slash four plus four is bought. So when when the first five is bought, before buying the four pl uh, the second five or four four plus four, you have the option to buy the five E along with the four plus four, and you represent this by putting this in the bank pool. You put the the second five train five slash four plus four into the bank pool and immediately the 5e is available for purchase as well when the first 5e is bought the second is also available which will go into the bank pool and then the first 4d is available for purchase the 4d is um a four i don't know if this is diesel or double it doesn't look like a diesel train it looks an electric like an electric train to me but the d in my mind stands for double because this counts four locations and then doubles their value. So they're worth it. They can get you a lot of money in the, in the late game. So those are the trains. This is the stock market. Um, during the stock market, or during, sorry, stock market movement is summarized down here uh, in this corner. So, so when at the end of a stock round, if 100% of a company is owned, the stock value will move up. That is pretty standard. Um, when a stock is sold, the stock will move down per, you know, one spot per share sold. That's also very standard. Um, if you withhold dividends, it'll move one to the left. And then I find this a little confusing, but if the dividends that you pay out are greater than or equal to two times the current market value. So if I have, you know, if my stock is at hundred and I pay out 200, then the stock market value, the current market value marker will move two to the right. Um, and if it's less than twice that amount, then it'll move one to the right. Um, if it's at least equal to the current market value. So in this game, if you pay 90 and your value is 100, you don't move to the right. You stay in place. I uh, Let's see. So during an operating round, uh, the order of operations in an operating round are to pay private companies. The miners will operate in numerical order. So They'll operate in one first one, then two, then three will operate. Then companies, companies, normal companies will operate in descending share value order as normal. They get to layer upgrade track. They get one tile action. The Y tiles here in Oslo, Stockholm, Helsinki, they have special home tiles or the Y, y tiles have special homes. So there's a, 623 tile, which I actually realized now that I don't have a visual reference for you, um, can only go into Oslo. And then the 582 goes on Helsinki and Stockholm. And that's just because the, they can't fit. If you look at the, the rules to the game, that Y tile here can't fit in Helsinki because it'll go off board with one of its spokes. Um, the doinks in this game can be upgraded into better doinks or small, small cities can be upgraded into better small cities. Um, and the Y locations yellow tile, like Oslo here, is just a regular sharp city. And this is a very unique feature for me as far as, far as this game's concerned, is that all of the yellow cities are sharp curve cities. So I don't, again, I don't have a reference, but this city exits through this side and this side those those tiles are the only yellow city tiles in the game there are no gentle curve cities and no straight through cities um, in yellow so you have to place these kind of funky routes that will move from you know one one tile sharp curve to the right and then upgrade later to like get to where you're actually trying to go also an important distinction in this game you can't 
visit off route locations, um, off board locations, these red ones out here, unless you actually token in that location. That's why there's tokens here, because normally you would never token in a red location. But in this game, you can't actually even visit it unless you've tokened it. Uh, back to the operating round. Um, so right, you lay or upgrade track, you then do a destination check for the miners. That's kind of step two. Um, it's possible then to interrupt for a bonus round um, or a bonus run by the connected miners. Then step three is additional token placement. You can do one token per OR. During that phase, um, during that step, companies may buy the mine or fairy tokens from their owning player. So like I said before, the the mine here just adds value, a plus 50 value for any company that is visiting this tile, the mines here. So you actually um, place that on the, the company that gets the bonus and you just need to remember. Also, it's important to notice that this off board location starts at 10, jumps up to 50, and then goes back down to 10 and brown, as opposed to the other locations that go up in value throughout the course of the game. Um, the other miner that has tokens is this fairy private, and it has two separate plus 20s that can be given to two separate companies. And when the owning company who has that token makes a run across this fairy line here, they get plus 20 on their run. Um, train operations happen then at that point, doinks count, uh, doinks count, but there are plus trains, which we've gone over. Um, off area, off map areas served must have a token, except for this one, because there's no place to actually place a token. The 5E and 4D trains ignore doinks, doinks and the 4D revenue is doubled, including including the ferry bonus for that one. Uh, dividend payment happens, then majors will pay full or withhold. The miners are always 50-50 split. Uh, train, buying, train buying is after that. Must So a company must own a train regardless of if there's a route. Miners are never required to own a train. Um, you can only buy one train of a type from the bank per OR. So <laughs> break that down. So there's, when I say of a type, if the twos are out and all there are, are twos and all the twos are out, all I can do is buy a two train here because I can't buy a second two train. These all get cobbled up pretty fast by the miners in the beginning of the game. But if, for example, there was only one two left and that was sitting on top of the first three, I could buy both of those because they are two different types of trains. So I could buy a two train and then I could buy a three train or a two plus two. And yes, a two train and a one plus one are the same type of train. So you can't buy two this way. Um, you can only buy one type of a train from the bank per OR. So there's no limit to how many you can buy from the pool. Um, so if, for example, uh, one of these, you buy this five, and so the four plus, four plus four goes into the bank pool, and then the five E is avail available for purchase. I believe that you can buy both of them. That's actually something that would be worth checking before you play your first game. Um, and I will make an it to go check that and upload a correction into this video in the subtitles if I'm wrong about that. Um, trains can be sold between companies from the beginning of the game. So in the very first phase, you could buy trains back and forth. The five E's are available for once the first four, five, five slash four plus four is bought, right? We went over those. Um, train buys with presidential funds do not need to be the cheapest available train. So in other games, if you're buying a train because of an emergency sale, you know, to prevent bankruptcy, you have to buy the, the cheapest available train. So if there's like a four train 
available, you have to buy that, even though, like, if that's in the in the bank pool, even though there's a better, like, a five train or something, then you would have to buy the four. In this game, that's not the case. Um, and then bankruptcy due to forced train bias is not in the game unless there's only one solvent player left. Um, I think that's about it. Let me just double check here. Minor companies, private companies, stuck around. Yeah. So anyway, that's 18 scan. Uh, that'll get you 95% of the way there, I think. Um, oh, and I forgot to show you. Johnny, after our first play of 18 scan. So you can see a little bit of how our map played out um, and that there are these kind of upgraded brown connection tiles um, in this game. And there's lots of triangular shapes in the game. Um, that's kind of due to the fact that these sharp towns, like I was saying, are the only single, um, the only yellow cities in the beginning of the game. And the only small cities in the beginning of the game in yellow are the gentle curves. So there's a very limited tile set and it sort of, it pseudo forces you into certain routes that you're building. Um, and this was a, yeah, this was a two player game. So we were allowed to have 70% of companies, but um, it's a, it's a pretty quick game. This was our very first game and the, you know, with the rules teach and, some referencing took us about four hours. So we're hoping to play this on stream. So stay tuned. And hopefully in the next month or so, we should have a, a video of 18 scan up on our channel for you to watch. Uh, hopefully that wasn't terribly painful. Thanks for sticking through and hope you enjoy playing 18 scan after learning this and uh, leave, leave some feedback. That'd be great. Thanks everybody. Good night.